Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. The library of functions. I'll refer to them as parent functions or base functions. I will expect you to consistently label certain key points and asymptotes, and so I'm gonna go through each of them individually right now. First of all, what we call the identity function, and you do need to know that term. The identity function is referring to the fact that y is identical to x in this function, y equals x. This is a graph you're familiar with. It's the graph of a line. It goes through the y-intercept zero and has a slope of one. So I'm labeling three points on here, one, one, zero, zero, and negative one, negative one. And now I want to compare to this a line with the same slope, but that has a different y-intercept, specifically the line y equals x plus 2. We know that since both f of x and this other line y equals x plus 2 have the same slope, what, what is their slope, by the way? 1, okay, because the coefficient of the x is the slope of the line, that they're going to be parallel to each other, right? But this new line it has a y-intercept of 2. It goes through the point 0, 2. But it's going to look exactly the same as far as the direction that the line is headed. It is completely parallel. It will never intersect the other line. So what we see is that this line is identical to the original line, but shifted up two units. And you see what effect that has on the y-coordinates? The y-coordinates went from being 0 to 2 here. This point corresponds, the 1, 1 corresponds to 1, 3, good. And this point corresponds to negative 1, positive 1. So what has happened is all of the y-coordinates have all increased by 2, and the graph has shifted up to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a whole bunch of different shapes besides lines. In intermediate algebra, we did lines, 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 lines. We're going to do a whole bunch of new shapes, and we're going to take those shapes and do things like we just did with this one, shift them up, shift them down, shift them right, shift them left, okay? So let's take a look at the, first we'll focus on the new shapes and the key points that I want you to label, and then we'll see how to shift them. Here's another familiar shape. What's this shape called? The U shape here, what's that called? Parabola. Anytime we have a degree two polynomial, it's gonna be the shape of a parabola, but this is the square function. This is just y equals x squared. This function goes through zero, zero, goes through one, and then one squared is also one and it goes through negative one, and negative one squared is also one. Okay, why do we say the domain of this function is all real numbers? It keeps going left and right, very good. It goes forever out to the left. It will never stop going in this direction. Yes, it's going upward, but it's also going to the left. And then it goes forever out to the right as well. So the domain, the x values, include everything. Another way of thinking of that is we can plug any x we want into x squared. And you can square any number. There's no restrictions on that. Why is the range bracket 0 to infinity? Because it stops at 0. The lowest point is 0, but then it goes up forever. Good. OK, here's a completely new shape, x cubed, the cube function. It takes any number we plug into it and cubes it. If you cube 0, you get 0. If you cube 1, you get 1. If you cube negative 1, you get negative 1. That's, it looks kind of like a parabola going half of a parabola up on the right and half of a parabola going down on the left. One thing I've noticed as people try to draw this, we're not all natural artists, right? One thing I've noticed is that people have a tendency to start out by plotting the key points that I told them to plot, which is great. But then they start to try to draw from up here. And then I end up with something, <laughs> something like that on the test. OK, so what one tip that I find helps a lot of people is instead put your key points on there. And then starting at 0, 0, go up and to the right, make half of a parabola going up. Then go back to 0, 0, and draw half of a parabola going downward through those other points. And then your graph will look much more as it should look. So try to get the right shape. Notice the domain and range of this guy are both all real numbers, because you can plug in any number you want, and you're going to get out a whole range of values. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.